Previously, I went to Australia, where I learned that in 1996, their government enacted sweeping gun control laws. The result? Reduced gun violence and zero mass shootings. So are there any lessons for America here? Virginia gun advocate Philip Van Cleve has a clear answer. We're not Australia. It's a very different culture. Different people, different everything. Right, there's no similarity with Australia. Australia is a former British colony with a wild frontier that was tamed by brave men who also <laughs> wiped out almost an entire indigenous population. And we are not similar to that. Right? Right. Right, because unlike Australia, we Americans know when the guns are taken away, tyranny inevitably follows. The Founding Fathers knew that governments tend to grow uh, beyond their means. In, in America, we're stepping in the direction of a police state. Is that really happening, Philip, or is that some kind of crazy paranoia? Uh, we have police, they're now wearing ninja suits, if you will. I mean, you don't even know they're police necessarily. They got the, the black masks on and everything. So it really isn't crazy paranoia. You're justifiably frightened about ninja police. Yeah, ninja police, yes. Yeah, ninja police. Yes, yeah. Sadly, without access to semi-automatic firearms, Australians wouldn't know a thing about real freedom. Bloody oath, we're free. We just sit here doing whatever we want. Everybody's just hanging out and having a good time. People don't have the same concerns anymore about um, getting gunned down when they're at a tourist resort. Yeah, but was that worth it? Yes. Was it worth giving up your fundamental freedoms just to not get shot in a gun massacre? What the f are you talking about? Australians must now live in this well-regulated nightmare because of ex-politicians like Rob Borbidge, who smugly thinks that his country has something to teach us. I hope that they would have a look at what has happened here. Why would people want to live like this? Because they might want a safer society to live in. But it's pointless for us to study the Australian experience because their fear of gun control back then has no parallels with ours. I mean, what kind of things were you hearing when you suggested gun control? Uh, that uh, government was becoming a dictatorship. All right, that's one. Uh, we were, were told that uh, people would not have the right to defend their property and their families. Okay, that's definitely two. Uh, the, the democracy is at stake somehow if uh, government decides there should be a background check. Yeah, all right. That uh, three. We're about to be invaded yes. by the Indonesians. That's completely different. No one in America is afraid of Indonesians. Are they afraid of Mexicans and Muslims coming? Maybe. Sure, he claims Australians were angry, but where is the proof? People's rights are being taken away from them. And I'm not going to give up any guns that they're going to take off me. Are you going to give yours up? No! Oh, OK, there it is. But how do those angry rural conservatives feel now? My immediate reaction was a, it, that it was an overreaction. But as time went on, um, the regulations were quite manageable. So, ho hold on. You didn't want to give up your high-powered gun? No but um, I felt as if I had a bit of a duty to the rest of the, our society. And if you think that sounds bad crazy, this effective gun control was enacted by conservative politicians against the will of their own base. There's no other way. There's no other way. But our politicians are different. They know that... Gun control doesn't work. Or even if it does... It takes a long time. And to be fair, John Howard and his Deputy Prime Minister Tim Fisher have had since 1996 to enact their sweeping reforms. It took less than three and a half months. What? And, uh, what? Put Arthur Massacre was on the 28th of April 1996. Yep. In a 12-week period shortly following that, bulk of legislation was devised, drafted, debated, and implement it. But, but it doesn't work. Zero massacres since 1996. Yeah, you keep saying that, but gun control doesn't work, so... My head was spinning. I had to clear it the traditional Aussie way. Beer. No, not that way. A walkabout. The Second Amendment is the sacrosanct... No. Political no. suicide. Zero massacres no. since 1996. From my cold, From my dead, cold hand. dead hand. Ninja police. Ninja police. Ninja police. It's a, it's a blooming onion. You're so hungry. B bl blooming onion. Um. What the? <laughs> of 
after three days in the bush with a guy in a kangaroo suit, it became clear what the real issue with gun control in America is. If guns aren't the problem, Philip, what is the problem? People. People are the problem? Yes. Do you know what? After spending this amount of time with you, Philip, I'm starting to believe that that's partially true. Good. <laughs> Good. Well, I'm glad you, you understand that people are the problem. Yeah. That is becoming just painfully obvious. After investigating the issue on opposite sides of the earth, I discovered that if Americans really do want gun control, there is actually one thing they can do to get it. Move to Australia. America loves guns. Hell, I love guns, but I also hate guns. Another mass shooting in America. Another mass shooting. Yet another mass shooting. So I was wondering, what if there was a world where people could keep their guns and have no mass shootings? <laughs> Welcome to Switzerland, a neutral country most known for its cobblestone streets, perfect for skipping, its clocks, sophisticated pocket knives, and guns. Turns out peaceful Switzerland is one of the most heavily armed nations in the world. And like America, they love their guns. Yet they have almost zero gun violence. How the f is that possible? Luckily, I ran into an expert. Is that a gun in your pocket or are you just... Oh, no, that's a gun. Meet Miko. For 20 plus years, he's been a firearms instructor for law enforcement personnel, military, and special forces. He also happens to be one hunk of a man. So, Thor, tell me about Swiss gun culture. We respect the guns because we have a mandatory service. Every man goes to the army, they get a training and a rifle um, in case of invasion. Which, to be fair, is a real threat since the last time Switzerland was invaded was in 1798, before color was invented. So, of course, they have a militia. The culture is a little bit different comparing to some other country. You're familiar that I'm American, right? Yeah. You can just say these things to my mm -hmm. face. You don't have to say other countries. I think the gun culture in America is, is getting out of hand. This is a joke. There should be common sense gun laws. Common sense. That's not our strength. Yeah, I've noticed that. <laughs> yeah, well, I can say that, but I don't like it when you say that. Okay. But what we do have is that good old American gun freedom. Yes! You know how easy it is to get a gun in the U.S.? I just go to... Walmart, psh, give him the money, gun. I know. My it's uncle crazy. Paul, out of his truck, he's got a bunch of guns. My brother Todd has a gun. You want to use it? Boom, borrow it for the weekend. That's nice. Not really. In Switzerland, you can get a gun from your um, grandparents or from your father, but you still have to do the paperwork. Even yeah. if I get a gun from my grandpa, I still got to tell the cops about it? Yeah. That's crazy, because in most states in America, you can buy a gun almost immediately without any background check but not in Switzerland. You apply the permit from the police. You provide uh, clearance of your criminal record that you don't have any convictions. Wait for two weeks. What if it's a small crime? What if you got caught urinating in public? You got caught for sleeping with your cousin because you didn't know it was a cousin because it was at your family reunion and she looked like she worked at catering. I what mean, if it's like assaulting a police officer, but really you were just tickling them? If you can't be responsible of uh, following some other simple rules in society, to behave, why should you have a gun? You don't need to raise your voice over this. Was there even a payoff to all these rules? How many school shootings have there been? None. What about malls? Every many people should None. What about like major holidays? People get shot up at major holidays here? Pro Nothing. Come on, with all those guns, they had to have at least one mass shooting somewhere. After weeks of research, I discovered there was, in fact, one mass shooting in the Swiss parliament in 2001. But they haven't had one since? You say incroyable. You had a mass shooting 17 years ago. We have one every 17 minutes. Il y a, il y a eu des changements. Uh, par exemple, uh, les munitions sont plus emportées avec uh, les, les armes. This is something that I'm having a hard time comprehending. You learned from a mistake and you made an improvement in the law. That's so Europe. And while Switzerland's last mass shooting was in 2001, America has had, no, keep going, no, more, more, yeah, there you go, over 1,900 mass shootings since 2012, averaging to about one a day. 
which is why Miko felt I needed to be properly trained before I headed back to the States. We have to talk about safety first. Can I like, like with this one? Yeah, just leave it alone. Don't, don't touch it. Don't, how are we gonna shoot it if I can't touch well, it? Let me explain you the rules first. So, number one thing that you have to remember is that you always treat the guns as if they're loaded. Because probably most of the accidents that happens, happens with empty guns. All right, so this, this one here, uh, this... Don't touch it, don't touch it. I think you don't pay enough you know, attention to what I'm saying. Okay, I'm listening. So you just have to follow four simple rules. Number one, you treat the guns always as if they're loaded. Number two, you never form any that you're not going to Number four, you got a feeling that you're not paying attention enough. What? No, I am. Let's do it. Let's blow some shit up. Miko, when you load these things, you ever get a little bit of a <laughs> erection? Do exactly what I say, okay? Okay. All right, pay attention. Pay attention. Okay, and slowly press back until the gun goes off. Jesus! This scares the shit out of me. I'm glad we had that safety instruction. This is the dream, shooting guns without the fear of getting shot. This is where America should be. All we need to do is keep ammo separate and have universal criminal and mental background checks. Have extremely strict open carry laws, justification for ownership, send written requests to authorities, and basically just change our entire gun culture. We can do that, right? It's not really that fun when you keep shitting yourself. You get used to it. No, this isn't a green screen. This is real, disgusting Switzerland, a neutral country full of non-combative, chocolate-eating yodelers. And they're also full of guns. In my previous report, I trained with firearms expert Miko. Miko, look, I shot some holes in the Swiss cheese. You get, I put the... I learned that when it comes to gun culture, Switzerland has a few more regulations than America. And thanks to these gun regulations and strict ammunition control, Switzerland has a murder rate of nearly zero. Sure, that's a great statistic, but how safe can it really be? To learn more about their gun culture, I attended the world's largest annual shooting festival right here, and holy that's a lot of guns. Even that baby has a gun. There's not enough training in the world to prepare me for this, so I brought my two secret weapons, my translator, Pierre, and my super manly, rock-hard American vest. Why are you wearing a pussy vest? What did, what did he say, Pierre? Pussy vest. Ah, oh, that's, that's funny, pussy okay. vest. Yeah. Why aren't you wearing a pussy vest? People are walking around with guns. Because it's safe. Oh my god, what is that? What is that? Hold, oh my get god. it, get it. They're the... shooting, no worries. They're shooting? Yeah, shooting over there, not here. How many accidents have happened here? Nine. Nine accidents? No. Nine accidents? No, no, no. Zero accidents. Zero? Zero. Zero. I thought you said nine. Nine. OK. It's, it's a German language. It's a German language. <laughs> I know in the United States American, this is dangerous. But in the Switzerland, we have tradition. Tradition. We have rules, and this. <laughs> we haven't rules. Rules? What kind of rules let little kids participate in this Glocktoberfest? You love shooting. Oh, yes. Why? Ça me détend. On prend le temps, on respire. So it's like yoga. Yes. They also throw booze into the mix because pourquoi pas? It's a, it's a national party. Oh, here comes the beer, everybody. Let's let the beer walk through. Because We've got rifles the and then beers. We come in here with the peoples, with the friends, and la 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 la, uh, the beer. La 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 la, la, la beer. Uh, duck, duck. We make the Yep, and it's finished. Well said. Guns and beers. This was an American wet dream. But something was different in this country. We respect arms, and if we respect it, it's not the problem. Why should I listen to this drunk Swiss roll? I was president for five years. You're telling me I'm having beer with the former president of Switzerland? Yes. Cheers. Nowhere else could a former president be surrounded by thousands of firearms with no security. How could we get America to feel this safe? That's your problem. That's my problem. <laughs> well, that's as neutral as it gets. But he's right, it is our problem. I mean, here they can shoot guns, drink beer, and no one gets hurt. In America, something like this could never happen. I decided to embrace this culture and hang with the only group that would let me in. Wow, yeah, you guys got AR-15s here, huh? 
Meet the Shooting Society of Prez. It was time to show these Swiss fondues how Americans shoot guns. I missed? You missed, yeah. Well, I miss. Alors, vous avez besoin de beaucoup d'entraînement. Vous êtes vraiment très nul. What do you know? You're 10 years old. Mon petit frère, il pourrait faire mieux. Yeah. Yeah. You probably never even kissed a girl. You ever take your gun to school? No. No? We don't are American. You're not American? No. OK, well, I can say that, but he can't. These Swiss kids, huh? Even if it is true. Because the fact is, for Swiss kids, life with guns is very different. Nothing happens. It's not like like in the U.S. where you have those mass shootings. You so your son, when he goes to school, he just has to worry about school. Yeah, catching the bus sometime. Unlike America, Switzerland has found a way to peacefully coexist with firearms. Shot! 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 shot. Oh! Shit. Whoa! Whoa! And one of the main reasons is that while these gun owners may be loaded, it's actually illegal for their guns to be loaded when not in use. We got beer, we got guns, we got food. I feel like I'm growing another testicle down here. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, America, if we're going to insist on being a nation of <laughs> gun nuts, we could at least try and Swiss things up. A little while back, I traveled to merry old England, a country that's got all kinds of weapons. Swords, shields, wooden catapults, terrible massage chairs, even magic wands. But the one weapon you don't see is guns. So I wanted to find out why in my new segment, Roy Meets World. Edward, where are you from? Uh, Harrogate, North Yorkshire. OK, so do you feel safer here or visiting America? Here. Safer here. Why? Why do you feel safer here? Because everybody's packing in the States. You really don't see guns out here on a regular basis, Not huh? really. Even with the cops, if you, I mean, if you're walking around and you do see some cops, they don't have guns on them. Why is that? Why y'all police don't have guns? <laughs> I, I honestly don't know about that one. But yeah. how are you going to accidentally kill somebody <laughs> you wanted to kill? Yeah, well, that's the whole point. <laughs> you shouldn't be doing that. So in the UK, how do you show power? How do you show people you got a big dick? But you don't have a gun. I don't try and show people that I've got a big dick. I know I've got one. Like, I think that we do it. There's one. Are you impressed by men who have big guns? No. We have to use this in our way. It's not common to have guns in uh, private homes at all. OK, so in Norway, how do men let women know that they have a big dick? Show it to them. <laughs> can't do that in America. <laughs> that is not an option. So they are packing. See, there's so much our two cultures can learn from each other. Why do you think Americans love guns so much? I think it's something like deeply ingrained in the culture. Like, uh, guns have been around for a long, long time in the US. Like, in the UK, it's not so much of an issue because it's very underground, whereas in America, it's normalized. Like, every, you can walk into like, a Walmart and buy a gun. And yes, and uh, a pack of Skittles and some ice cream. Yeah, we'll exactly. be right back out the door. So where are you all from? South Africa. Why do you think Americans love guns so much? Uh, probably the Constitution and just because they're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you just hit us right out the gate. What is America's reputation in the world? <laughs> probably mass shootings, as bad as it sounds. That's all we know known for? No, it's not only that, thing. but it's you turn on the We got hot dogs, we got <laughs> Steph Curry. Why do you think Americans love guns so much? From an outsider's perspective, I think they are also really proud of their military and everything. Well, we whooped Thank a lot of ass. <laughs> <laughs> Americans so? whooped a lot of ass. You think so, at least, yeah. Check the stats. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Whooped the British ass. Civil War, we whooped our own ass. So they didn't really know America's record on the court. And it turns out, guns aren't just hurting our people, they're hurting our street cred all over the world. I feel like, you know, the U.S. was kind of like this beacon that a lot of people followed. If you look at it from the gun perspective, some of the other topics that are going on currently as well, I think it is affecting a little bit of its credibility on the global stage. But it's a problem when guns have got more rats than, than women, so <laughs> within a <the> country. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Is it possible that the rest of the world is just being too hard on America and the gun violence? We we only been around 200 years. Yeah. You got you some growing pains. Everybody know when you start a country, 
it's gonna be rough for a little while because you just whoop somebody's ass, no disrespect. I have um, little faith in yeah. the country at the moment. Like, I've never been, I've always wanted to visit it, but every time we talk about it, we're like, mm, actually, like, the attitude. I'm not sure. So Americans might not be airbnb in their fully armed apartments to these people anytime soon, but that doesn't mean that all of Europe is a gun-free zone. We can take Spitsbergen in Norway. That's the highest density of guns in any society in the world. Everybody has a gun in Spitsbergen. That's for protection for polar bears, but they don't shoot each other. It's just for the polar bears. Right. Yeah, but you have to wear a gun if you go outside the city. You're not allowed to go without. Wait, it's a law yeah. that you have to wear a gun in that yeah. part. One in the party has to wear a gun to go outside of the city limits. To keep you from getting eaten by a polar bear. Right. Yeah. Damn, mandatory guns to fight polar bears? I'm canceling my trip to Oslo. Honduras, here I come. There's no polar bears there, right?